Hey guys, welcome to another video. Now, we are doing dyno prep on this car, so I am going to go over a whole bunch of things, just make sure everything is fine. Do stuff like check the compression, check the spark plugs. Because if something goes wrong with your car on the dyno, you're not going to get a refund for what you paid for to go to the dyno. If the car fails, it's your fault. So I'm going to be going over a whole bunch of stuff on the car, and let's see where the video takes us. I pulled out these spark plugs to have a quick look at how the engine is running. And I don't know if you guys are experts, I'm not really an expert, but as you can see, this is way, way too black. So you can see this is running really rich. Now I know that the air fuel ratio gauge does tell me that this car runs rich. It runs at about high 10s, low 11s. But look at the plug. So this is number 4, number 3, number 2, and number 1. So as you guys can see, they're all black, but the tips are different colors and they go in a gradient. So cylinder 1, you can see, has this brown white color which basically means it's running hotter so it's probably running leaner on the boost at idle it looks like they're all running rich because they used to be all this black color and then this one is very very black so this one is running really really rich as you can see the whole thing is pitch black but if you look at number cylinder number one you can see it's not all that black and this is actually a bit more of a white color now that led me to believe that the cylinders are not all running at the same air fuel ratio. So I investigated a bit. If you come over here, you can see we still have everything in here. So what I'm thinking is happening is fuel's coming in. This is the bleeder. We must remember all four of these injectors do fire at the same time, so they pulse together. And the hole that runs through this fuel rail is quite small, so I think there's a pressure drop when you get into boost and you're asking for a lot of fuel. By the time the fuel gets to this last injector, there's a significant pressure drop meaning they progressively spray less fuel because they have less fuel pressure. Also, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, but the hole in there, at the top there, it's not very big. The hole's actually quite small. So I got a new fuel rail. We'll open that now. This, I believe, is a copy of the AEM design. And as you guys can see, it has multiple mounting points because if it only has the outer, middle and outer, it won't work. You need these two center ones because the uh, P2P or P2K intake uses a different mount and it only uses two bolts. Where the old EG D16A6 uses three holes. So this is like a universal one. We'll work on both of them because it has all the different holes. But the big thing is, this is the feed side. Then if you guys can see how big that hole is, so now we don't have that small feed issue anymore. Also, the regulator sits at the end, it doesn't sit on the feed side anymore. So I think this fuel rail will solve the uneven burning of fuel in the engine, which is quite dangerous because if the last one is running lean, you can actually blow up the engine. And the air fuel ratio gauge won't even tell you why. Okay, so we have the fuel rail out. This is the old one. Now I have, uh, I'm slightly worried that these injectors might not fit in the new rail because they did drill these uh, holes bigger in this one to accept these injectors. So they drilled out these holes. But as you can see, the feed hole to the next one is that tiny hole up there. So that's the small hole that's feeding from the feed past the regulator and then all the way to the end. And imagine if all four of these are firing at the same time, I think by the time the fuel gets to this side, it might be a bit lower than the first injector. So these holes are a bit smaller, but I'm hoping that if I just put a smaller rubber on here, it will still fit in here, otherwise I have to draw these out as well. Okay, so let's quickly take the new fuel rail and see how it actually fits here. Hmm, that's how it fits. Looks really nice, blends in nicely with all the blue around it. It's actually a very, very, very close match. Anyway, now they know it does fit because these intakes only have two mounting points where the 
older ones, the PO8s, have three. Hi right, guys, it's the next day. As you guys saw, we had a bit of a problem. These injectors actually did not fit into the rail. So what I did is I had a 13 roll, just found it laying around. Problem was I needed a 14. For some reason, the 14s are double the price of a 13. But anyway, I tested it, just hand drilling it with this one. So the texture in here was a bit too rough. So I actually borrowed someone's bench drill, and then we did it again. It's much smoother now. I also used some sandpaper just to smooth it out. But it is 14 mil now, these holes. So we have to go with the big seal. So then I just mimicked what they did with the old fuel setup, which is this fuel rail. They drilled it out to 14. So I drilled this out to 14 as well. I know it works, so why would I mess with it? Now this is a stock injector. Now the stock injector and a stock O-ring will actually fit into this rail without modifying it. So you can buy this rail and you won't have to modify it if you're using stock or very similar to stock injectors. This is what it looks like. I think it looks really nice. Paint match is very, very close and everything is tight. Fuel pressure regulators on and connected properly. It is now on the other side. It used to sit on this side. I do think this is a better design. Anyway, one thing that bothers me about this is that these fittings tighten onto a rubber grommet that you can see there. Now, once you try and tighten this uh, fitting, it tightens onto these copper washers. You can only tighten it so much before this starts tightening onto the rubber again. If you tighten this too much, this rubber will probably rip and push itself out of there. So you have to lock the one to tighten the other one. I think what I'm going to do is take these rubber uh, grommets out and put copper in there as well. Just copper washers, both sides. I'm going to turn it on now, prime the fuel system, and I really do hope it doesn't leak. I am really tired of dealing with leaks on this car. So let's see how it goes. Okay, fuel rail is on, we tested it, there's absolutely no leaks. What I'm going to do now is just start it and see if there's a leak while it's running. I don't know if it's running, if that might cause it to leak, I don't think so. Maybe while we go on the boost it might because that will increase the fuel pressure. So we won't be able to test that now, but I'm going to start it and see if we have any leaks then. Okay, so I took the car for a drive and everything is kind of fine. Uh, fuel rail is not leaking at all. That's very good. I'm really happy about that. Three weeks later. Okay, guys, so it's been a few weeks since I installed the fuel rail and I have made a few changes. So I thought I'd just add this in at the end of the video. Now, this is the O-ring they give you with the kit and this is the one I put in here. This one is way too thick. So once you actually put it in here, it is very thick and it makes this actually stand out quite far. And you can't tighten it all the way because it will actually squeeze this o-ring out of there and rip it eventually so you can only tighten it onto the seal meaning these fittings you can't really make them tight so all i did is i took out these big ones put in these small ones there is like a beveled edge on these uh, fittings at the end so this smaller seal is actually now sitting inside that beveled edge so you can actually get it to tighten all the way down i did also use quite a lot of this ptfe tape on the threads just to make sure so i'm not sure is it the o-ring that's sealing it or is it the thread tape not really sure but I would recommend definitely using PTFE tape. Do not use the blue and white one. That won't work on fuel. It has to be PTFE. And I believe the red one, the yellow one, and apparently this green one is PTFE. But other than that, it is working. It does still look nice. It does not leak. I did actually drill out this fitting as well. There's a hole in the center that was 
a bit too small for my liking so I drilled it out by one mil. I also drilled the hole that goes through the feed just to make sure there's no restriction on this feed end but I have been running the car I did check the spark plugs it does work plugs is now burning even so very happy with that and apart from them giving you the incorrect o-ring for the setup I would recommend this part it is quite cheap and it is very effective anyway guys please like comment subscribe thanks for watching I'll see you all in the next one